And now we honor two alums with the Distinguished Alumni Award. The Distinguished Alumni Award is Minnetonka's premier alumni award, recognizing distinguished professional achievement, leadership, and service toward the greater good. Our first honoree is Richard Humlicker from the class of 1967. Richard has worked for the Center for Discovery based in Harris, New York for 33 years. Discovery is a nonprofit organization that serves children and adults with severe disabilities, medical frailties, and autism spectrum disorder. Discovery serves more than 250 children and 160 adults in its 50 residential homes and reaches hundreds more children and adults on an outpatient basis in its schools and clinics. A few years after he became Vice President of Development, he was raising millions of dollars in donations to support the center. Discovery Board members describe Richard as one of the extraordinary people whose intention is to ensure quality care for all Discovery residents. He works tirelessly to enhance every aspect of their lives. Interesting Richard is today is his sister, Ruth Wooden. Good morning. I'm Ruth Wooden, a proud graduate of Minnetonka High School, class of 1964. Back then I was known as Ruth Humlicker, but I was probably better known as the older sister of Dick Humlicker, class of 67 and athlete extraordinaire. In fact, Dick, who now goes by Richard, is probably one of the only 12 varsity letter athletes in the history of Minnetonka High School. He played varsity football as a freshman. He excelled in football, tennis, and hockey. There were four Humlicker kids, including our sister Chris in the class of 68, and our brother John in the class of 75. Now with a name like Humlicker, which no one ever spelled correctly, by the way, everyone knew we were related. And we knew we would always hear things like, how about that touchdown your brother Dick scored last Friday night? He was so cool in high school. Indeed, Richard, was a fierce athletic competitor back then, and he just had to win. Today, 50 years after he graduated from Minnetonka High School, we are all here to celebrate how Richard has channeled that fierce competitive drive into a legacy of love and that same devotion to winning in his work on behalf of some of the most medically fragile, disabled kids you'll ever have the pleasure of meeting. I'm standing here in Burleyville, New York, in the beautiful Catskill Mountains at the Center for Discovery. Richard has worked here for more than 33 years. That's half his lifetime. When he started, there were less than 30 people working here, and today 1,600 people are employed at the Center for Discovery. Richard is Director of Development, and he's been responsible for raising tens of millions of dollars to fund their world-renowned program. But that barely begins to describe his role here. You can ask anyone on the staff, the residents and their parents, board of directors, and they'll tell you, Richard is the heart and soul of this place. The Center for Discovery is a one-of-a-kind residential facility for 400 kids and adults, and hundreds more in their outpatient program. These kids have multiple medical frailties, and they live in wonderful, beautiful homes of five to 10 people each, and it's surrounded by facilities such as the Big Barn right here. The Big Barn houses classrooms, a production studio, a theater, and culinary facilities. The center is indeed legendary for their innovative programs. For example, right here on site, they build equipment so that the children can do kid-like things, simple things like climb a tree, float in a canoe, ride a horse, even dance in a wheelchair. You know, Richard once told me, these are just kids and they want to do kid things. I want to give that to them. And he does give that to them. It is not a stretch to say that these activities would not be possible without the financial support that Richard and his team lovingly raise every year. You could not have selected a more generous and worthy person to be the distinguished alum of Minnetonka High School. There are people with fancier resumes and much bigger 401ks, and surely Richard could have been one of them. But there is no one with a bigger heart than my brother Richard. So on behalf of the entire Humlicker family, including our loving parents who live on in us, we thank you for selecting our very cool brother, Richard Humlicker, as one of this year's 
distinguished alums at Minnetonka High School. Bravo, Richard. To be emotional about the Rima Kawa. Marty Benson, oh. Everybody's seen that video but me. First time I've seen that. <laughs> and uh, I sort of want to echo what Ryan said. I believe I left one enriching environment and ended up in another one. Uh, Minnetonka was very special for me. And I'm not the retiring type. I'm going to be 69 in three months. And I plan on working at the Center for Discovery for a long time. It's incredibly inspirational. We really take care of the most medically fragile children and adults. Our youngest resident is five. Our oldest is 85. We have a group of elders there, folks who were institutionalized for 50, 60 years, locked away when we found them in the early 80s. I better thank the Alumni Association because without them, uh, this wouldn't happen. And my sister Ruth and her buddy Joe Mullen from her class, uh, I don't want to say snuck behind my back, but they snuck behind my back <laughs> and uh, talked talk to the people at the center, and here I am. Not really my thing, but thanks Joe, thanks Ruth. Uh, I'm thrilled to have my wife of over 30 plus years with me, Cindy, we met at the center. We worked together for 13 years. And then it was either a Saturday or a Sunday. We were both at the center. I looked at her and I said, we have daughters growing up at home. Who the hell is watching them? We're always here. <laughs> and now she forgives me. She left the center. She's been a uh, sixth grade teacher and one of the best public schools up in the Katska Mountains, and she's remarkable. They give her every kid who's got special needs because she worked at the center, so <laughs> half her class has IEPs, but she handles it. I have my youngest daughter, Gabrielle, here. I have three grown daughters. Gabrielle, I'm thrilled you're here. Gabrielle graduated from UConn a couple years ago, now works down uh, for a small financial firm down on Wall Street that deals primarily with women's financial issues. My middle daughter, Kate, went away to Northeastern University, wandered back, and she uh, now teaches at the Center for Discovery. Uh, teaches a class of the most behavioral, aggressive, abusive, autistic children, and she's got a gift. Not sure where she got it. <laughs> and my older daughter, Jessica, is down in Florida digging out from the, uh, from the storm. But she's a digger, she's remarkable, she's uh, been a manager for Starbucks from Boston to New York to Florida, opening new stores and getting them running, and just, just remarkable. Uh, let me put my glasses on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Back to Minnetonka. Uh, I'll tell you about the coaches in a minute, because that's what I did. But I want to remember Evelyn Moe. I don't know if anybody in the room, probably somebody remembers Evelyn Moe. Our Latin teacher. Yeah, you took my line, you took my line. Uh, she taught me how to study, she taught me how to pay attention, was not, which was not really my long suit. And as someone just said, a moa ma samant, a mama samant is amant. Thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. I'll get it together. Walt, Walt West was the football coach here, and Walt taught fundamentals and expected us to win. That was it. Uh, Ernie DeSantis was my tennis coach. I finished fourth in the state my senior year. I still aggravated about that. <laughs> uh, and Bud Leak was my hockey coach. Bud was a disciplinarian. He expected us all to do the drills. I was a goaltender, so there were no skating drills that I didn't have to do. But uh, I loved Bud. I'm going, to scare, I'm going to share you one moment, Minnetonka moment, and one Center for Discovery moment. You've seen, you've seen the place. Those kids are just, and adults, just inspire the out of you. 
Parents arrive in 2017. I tour parents every week, having been told what their severely disabled son or daughter will never ever do, will should never try, should never do. And I guess because of the athlete in me, we've put together an adventure team, a, a group of apes, adaptive physical educators, music therapists, and we get these kids and these are the most severely disabled kids. 65% of them are multiply disabled, medically fragile, severely, profoundly mentally retarded. The autistic kids we have at the center are, are they arrive there when they're teenagers because mom and dad can't handle them anymore. They've just thrown out of public school. They're abusive, they're self-aggressive. And we have 4,000 acre, four farms. We get those kids, they lose weight. They get, they get exercise every day. These kids don't sit in the classroom. Uh, I always laugh, we, we, have, we have biodynamic farms up there. We've been organic and biodynamic good food is, is essential to these kids. It's medicine. Our truck drives around that delivers it. Food is medicine. We have exercise. Uh, and I always laugh. Good food, good exercise, good sleep. Who the hell doesn't that work for? Well, it, well, it work, works for these kids. Uh, my Minnetonka moment. Nancy Countryman, who I'm guessing more than one or two people in this room know, uh, taught me the greatest lesson. Uh, she was, back in early 60s, she was the number one female tennis player in the state. And I thought I was a hot shot. I was 17 years old. She took me on the tennis court and I was gonna have fun with her. She kicked my ass. <laughs> I mean, kicked it. I'm sure, I'm sure I slumped off the court, you know, whatever. But what a lesson. What a lesson. It sunk in sometimes later that, and I'm surrounded by by remarkable women, so I'm not sure why I didn't pick up on that, but they can do anything, and she taught me that. <laughs> and now I just want to tell you one final story. Uh, May 8th, 1985, I don't know if you saw the last picture on, my, on the video that Ruth put together, it was a woman named Sally, 62 years, locked in the state institution in New York City. In New York, New York City. 6,000 people locked away. I mean locked away, nothing going on. She arrived on May 8, 1985 at a beautiful new home that we had, we had built with 12 of her other folks who we, we identified in the institution that we thought we could care for. They got off the bus with all their belongings after 50, 60 years in garbage bags. Sally got off with a dozen thousand piece jigsaw puzzles that had been glued together that she, that she could do. And she, uh, and these weren't kids, so these were very involved, so, so we knew that the intelligence was there, the brilliance was there, and uh, we found two sisters of hers who had long disconnected. One sister out in Montana didn't even know she had a disabled sister. That was the, that was the story back then. And Sally, for 20 years, worked in our greenhouse, and at the end of the day, you'd have to tell her to stop work, and she was just, just, re just absolutely remarkable. Uh, and I only have about a thousand other inspiring stories. I've invited several people to come to the Center for Discovery. And wherever they are, it's worth the trip. These kids are just absolutely inspirational. I've been battling cancer. <laughs> come back three times. My wife, Cindy, has, uh, I'd say the least, taken good care of me, but it's really the center. Chemo three times, radiation three times, stem cell transplant five and a half years ago, and I kicked the cancer's ass, and I'm not going to retire. I'm at the center of a discovery forever. So thank you.